Hello there. We are about to take a look at another 1070 from EVGA. I've already spent a little bit of time fixing these burned beads. I uh, also replaced the uh, memory face um, MOSFET controller turned out to be okay um, but the um, card still does not boot so and this video is going to be a little bit about memory so in order to test the card this particular one that uses a reference board and by reference board I mean this board is kind of universal you can have up to six phases here for the GPU um, and uh, you can even have two memory MOSFETs that they're all going to be feeding the same coil um, in any event this particular board will not um, run mats without the external power connector even though under normal circumstances you can power on the card if everything works it'll give you an image and it will complain about the external power supply so but you gotta keep in mind that without the external power supply the memory test will not run so with that said we're just gonna turn that on and as usual the monitor gives no picture and it takes a while you can see there that we are stuck on code 71 and the reset if you look at the light over there, the reset had been released, which is good. And we're just kind of sitting here and chilling, waiting for the monitor to kind of light up. And there we go, the light stopped blinking, the display lit up, but there's no image, and we're waiting for the mats to run in the background and uh, I've configured my test to shut down the computer at the end of the test and right now we're just waiting for a test to complete and it'll shut down the motherboard automatically by the way I think I'm testing about five, megab five megabytes so we don't really need to test anything more than that and there we go turn that off okay so now we're looking at the report and it complains about the bank one and a bank one in case you didn't know is going to be this chip right there so we're gonna try to get it off the board and see if there's any soldering problems and we're going to uh, measure its resistance to make sure that it works or it possibly works we're going to try to reball and resolder it back on and if that doesn't work we're going to replace it and see if that solves the problem
Okay, so there are a couple of ways to check for uh, DDR5 memory, GDDR5. First, and the most obvious test to do is to check for resistance on the uh, actual uh, voltage on, on, on the VCC, and that's going to be your first um, first pin on pretty much any corner. So you can look on this chart that every every outermost corner is ground, so you can put one on the ground and then the one right underneath it. So it doesn't matter which which corner you're going to be doing this from, either this corner, that corner, this corner, or this corner, is always first spin and then the second one down. So and that's you're going to be measuring that for resistance and for a good working chip on a GDDR5 by Micron. And uh, let me give you a specific marking because some different different revisions of this chip will uh, have a slightly different uh, reading but uh, this one is a most common one and its reading is D9TCB so basically we're measuring the resistance from here to there and uh, that's your memory resistance that you will be measuring on your card like so like you typically check your from free memory resistance like this so you will be getting around uh, 10 kilo ohms um, 10 to 11 kilo ohms is maybe maybe 9 is what I would consider a working chip so this chip here actually gets let's see what this chip gets this particular one Nine point five. So I get nine point five. Uh, let me let me show it to you so you can see it yourself. There. So we get nine point five kilo ohms. So this chip is supposedly alive. However, we're getting uh, uh, data read errors. So there's also another check that you can do we can check the data lines and the data lines are checked in the diode mode so you flip your uh, multimeter to a diode mode and then you proceed basically watching the voltage drop so you put one probe on the ground and then you start probing these uh, these gray areas here and they all should they, sh they all should have uh, more or less the same uh, the, uh, voltage drop and uh, I'm going to show it to you now but you gotta keep in mind that each multimeter um, sends a different voltage when it's in diode mode in order to measure the voltage drop some multimeters send 3 volts this particular one I believe measures uh, it, it sends out 2 volt signal so and you can literally hook up another multimeter to your leads while this multimeter is in the uh, uh, diode mode and actually measure how much volts it sends and that way you know so I believe this one sends 2 volts so I would place like I said one probe to the ground and then the red probe I will start poking all these data data lines this 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 until I find one that deviates from the rest of them and uh, it shouldn't deviate much um, and if it does deviate quite a bit then we know we have a problem so uh, I, I already went ahead and I scattered across uh, all of them and I did find one let me show you Zero. One, 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 and one twenty. So one one hundred twenty one, one three hundred, and one one hundred twenty one. So basically, these three, these three here. Right there. 
So measuring these three, only the middle one does not match to either one of them above, above or, uh, or below. So that tells me that there's error on, on this data line and therefore this chip is bad. So we're going to not going to bother with reballing and uh, trying this chip. So I'm just gonna inst uh, I'm going to reball another chip, which I think is working, and uh, we'll we'll take it from there. Okay, go into a microscope. So the challenge with this method is as soon as you start warming things up, balls start to move around. And that's because uh, of the flux and surface tension that it applies. So you can see some of the balls are already starting to move. So I would have to manually carefully put them back where they belong or at least move them out of the way and then of course the key here is to heat it up slowly And then the most important element of this is the actual uh, flux application. If you apply too much, the uh, surface tension of the flux will pull the uh, balls together. And if you apply too little, the, the minimum airflow that you set on your hot air gas station will simply blow them off. So you need to, um, you still need to have some flux on there almost, almost dry. That's why you saw me uh, kind of tapping. Um, I would wipe my finger and then I would wipe my finger dry and then I would kind of go uh, tap um, on, the, on the chip so that way it's all uh, uniform. And then slowly heating it up and you will uh, eventually you will start seeing these bowls uh, that they will start uh, sticking to the pads. So once you see your balls starting to move, um, but they don't align completely all the way, at that point you can add a little bit of flux to help them move, because they are already attached to the path, just not 100%. So I would drop 
a couple and then that should help them move to their final destination. You can kind of see both, they're starting to get glossy and that's an indication that you're reaching the proper temperature and when they do get glossy they start to actually move around and the problem I'm having right now is that I have this large aluminum block that kind of acts as a heat sink so it takes a while for me to heat this thing up Okay, so the cart cooled down. We uh, put it back into our test test bench. Let's uh, power it on. See what happens. Again, the uh, the flash flash card with uh, with mats is on there, and the monitor is already responding. That's good, and we have a picture. We're just now going to let uh, mats. Uh, finish its test, see if everything went well. I'm not seeing any errors on the screen. And I think we're gonna pass. Good. So now all that's left to do is to uh, get this card assembled and run it in Firmark and hopefully everything works well.
and unfortunately the driver fails to, fails to install and when it does I get artifacts all over the screen in which case it means that the GPU is probably dead and there's nothing else I can do about this card so that error those, those weird lines they were caused by this chip this guy right there it's a U505 this is a uh, um, face controller it controls all of our phases for the GPU so after after I had replaced that chip I can fire up the test bench to show you that it actually works There we go. Okay, so we're inside Windows now. I'm going to run GPU Z and we're going to look at a couple of things. So, first and foremost, we uh, want to make sure that our clock displayed correctly and um, this particular board is does not support PCI Express 3.0 so it says 2.0 that's normal so if your board does support 3.0 you want that to make you want to make sure that it does say that um, important number here is the power consumption uh, 5 6 percent all the way up to 18 percent TDP depending on really nothing is going on right now on the screen but if something were to happen that TDP is gonna is gonna go all the way up. Like um, if I were to start a stress test, this TDP value is gonna go really high, and I can't really see anything here on the screen. And that's because because of the stupid HDMI switch. So let me let me turn that. Let me turn around. Which one is it? And we'll actually have to look through the camera, unfortunately. So right there, TDP right now is 60, 51%, 99%. So that tells me that the card is being utilized fully. And uh, the other thing to look at is that the memory clock and the GPU clock are right where they're supposed to be. You don't want to see like a 400 uh, megahertz stuck on any one of them that would indicate a problem so I'm going to fire up the memory test and what that will do it will load 95 percent of the memory so that way we can see that the memory is actually functioning properly there we go And then we can monitor two different temperatures here. One's monitoring the temperature of the GPU, and the other one's monitoring the temperature at the hotspot, or basically a um, temperature where the memory MOSFET is located. And we're just going to let it run for a while and see how well it performs. I hope you guys learned something today. I thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe and like this video to help me with the view counts and uh, I hope you find this video helpful and see you later thanks for watching bye bye